Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning, a special welcome if you're visiting with us. We are glad you're here at St. Paul's worshiping with us on this day. A few announcements before we begin our worship. You see I am by myself. Pastor Eccles and Patty and Dawn Hill are with our 16 youth down in Houston right now seeing how much they can sweat. That's what they're doing. No, they're at the National Youth Gathering in Houston with around 25,000 of their closest friends, 20,000 youth. And when you add all the leaders and volunteers there, it's uh, closer to 25,000. So we give thanks to God that they're there at the National Youth Gathering. And we'll continue to lift them up in prayers as they are on officially day two. And they'll be coming back later this week after the gathering is over. So keep them in your thoughts and prayers. And for all the other youth who are traveling back home after the youth gathering later this week. A few announcements before we begin our worship. This reminder, next Sunday evening is St. Paul's Day at the Otters game. So make it a point to come to Bossy Field, out to Bossy Field for the Otters game. That will take place uh, first pitches at 5. The sign up is at the Welcome Center. Tickets are provided if you sign up at the Welcome Center in advance just to make sure we have enough. So those tickets have been provided. If you would like to give a donation, uh, instead of paying for those tickets, we ask that you give to the St. Paul's Capital Improvement Fund or the Evansville Lutheran School Renovation Fund. So make sure you do that if you would like to, but also just make it a point to come out to the Otters game next Sunday, 5 p.m., sign up at the Welcome Center. Also, in a few weeks, on July 31st, we have a fifth Sunday celebration. Fifth Sunday celebration means that we only have one worship service. So the neat thing is, on that fifth Sunday, we will be having uh, the youth kind of give us a report of how things went at the National Youth Gathering. They'll be helping serve a Texas barbecue uh, there after the, after the worship service. Our, our order, our time, schedule of events, we'll have Bible class at 8.30, worship service at 9.30. And that means that we're only having how many worship services on the 31st? I want everyone to say it together. One. So if you show up at this time on the 31st, we will probably be just catching the end of the sermon. So some of you might do that intentionally. We encourage you not to, but uh, make sure that you come. Bible class 830, worship at 930. We're going to have a potluck at 1115. Youth are providing the Texas barbecue as the main course. So if you'd like to bring a side dish or a dessert, please do so. Once again, that potluck is at 1115, right after our one worship service at 930 on the 31st. Also, just to put in your memory banks and your calendars, the plan is to have the new renovation and the hallway dedication taking place on August 7th. The workers are continuing with the renovation. It looks amazing. They, had the, they were putting in the light fixtures this week and they had them turned on. It looked like a whole different hallway already. It was truly amazing. So we're going to have the ELS hallway de uh, dedication on August 7th at 9.30. At the beginning of Sunday school hour, we're going to meet down at the, sun at the wing of the school and have that dedication of the renovation project on August 7th. Then at this service, the late service on August 7th, we will have the faculty and staff of Evansville Lutheran School here for the commissioning for the following school year, this coming school year, which starts on August 9th. So that we'll have that as a Christian Education Sunday where we'll have the ELS faculty and staff with us and then that hallway dedication that will take place at 9.30. So make sure you write that in your calendars and looking forward towards that. Our order of worship this morning is as printed in our bulletins. We give God thanks and praise that we're here to receive his gifts that he has to give to us this day. And we begin with the Ring of the Bells.
great Father of glory, pure Father of heart, and angels adore thee, all hailing this heart, all are you and all us to see, is only Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are of our nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake he forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. It is he who remembered us in our low estate and rescued us from our foes. He who gives food to all flesh. Give thanks to the God of heaven. Glory be to the Father, and to the Spirit, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, in your deep compassion, you rescue us from whatever may hurt us. Teach us to love you above all things, to love our neighbors as ourselves. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading for this, the fifth Sunday after the Pentecost, is from Leviticus chapter 19. When you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not reap your field right up to its edge, neither shall you gather the gleanings after your harvest. You shall not strip your vineyard bare, neither shall you gather the fallen grapes of your vineyard. You shall leave them for the poor and for the sojourner. I am the Lord your God. You shall not steal. You shall not deal falsely. You shall not lie to one another. You shall not swear by my name falsely, and so profane the name of the Lord your God. I am the Lord. You shall not oppress your neighbor or rob him. The wages of a hired servant shall not remain with you all night until the morning. You shall not curse the deaf or put a stumbling block before the blind, but you shall fear your God. I am the Lord. You shall do no injustice in court. You shall not be partial to the poor or defer to the great, but in righteousness shall you judge your neighbor. You shall not go around as a slanderer among your people, and you shall not stand up against the life of your neighbor. I am the Lord. You shall not hate your brother in your heart, but you shall reason frankly with your neighbor, lest you incur sin because of him. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against the sons of your own people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Colossians chapter 1. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and Timothy our brother, to the saints and faithful brothers in Christ at Colossae, grace to you and peace from God our Father. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. Of this you have heard before in the word of the truth, the gospel, which has come to you as indeed in the whole world it is bearing fruit and growing, as it also does among you, since the day you heard it and understood the grace of God in truth, just as you learned it from Epaphras, our beloved fellow servant. He is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf and has made known to us your love in the Spirit. And so, from the day we heard, we, not, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. May you be strengthened with all power according to his glorious might for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 10th chapter. Behold, a lawyer stood up to put Jesus to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? And he answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your strength, with all of your mind, 
and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. But he, desiring to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. He fell among robbers, who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a priest was going down the road. When he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. He went to him, he bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he sent him on his, set him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And the next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I come back. Which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? He said, The one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, You go and do likewise. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess together our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being a one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated.
Please bow your heads in prayer with me. Lord, may the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts and minds be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God, our Heavenly Father above, who gives us every good and perfect gift. Amen. Now, I know a good number of you are parents, so I want you to think back possibly growing up, growing up to see if you ever got away with something. I know maybe not you, maybe it's your children or something, if they ever got away with doing something. Uh, maybe it was that you went and tried to see how long you could get away with out cleaning your room before your mom or dad noticed, just, just to see by chance. Maybe it was to see if someone would notice that you just happened to, to find a spot on a couch or in your favorite chair and you binge watch TV all day. No one's going to notice, right? Or maybe you as a child got under your sheet with a flashlight or a headlamp and decided, I'm going to read all night and no one will know the difference. I'm not saying that none, any of you ever did these things, right? No, of course not. Even as adults, we like to see what we can get away with sometimes, though. Now, I know most of you, if not all of you, on your way to church this morning, stayed under the speed limit, right? No one went 36 in that 35. You didn't go over that, because speed limit says this is the limit. I know none of you, none of you say, well, that's a suggestion. That's not a limit. Hmm, right. The real question comes down to whether or not we do what we do with the law, with those in authority over us to tell us to do, or do we like trying to figure out our own way? See, sadly, we like to argue. We like to split hairs about why we do what we do. We also try to rationalize why we do. Those times when we don't do what we should do, we try to rationalize why we made that decision, why we did what we did. We see a rationalization unfolding before our eyes in the gospel reading for this morning from Luke chapter 10. A lawyer, a lawyer seeks to justify himself. He wants to argue a point. So he seeks to justify himself and also at the same time possibly trying to trap Jesus in his own words by asking Jesus this question. Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus responds to this lawyer's line of questioning with questions of his own. First, what is written in the law? Second, how do you read it? Wow. Those are some major issues. First, Jesus wants to make sure the lawyer knows what is the law, what's written in God's word about the law. Do you know the law? Do you know the word? And then second, Jesus is asking this lawyer, this attorney, how do you read it? Do you read it correctly how God intended it to be, or are you reading it how you want it to be read? So the lawyer goes on to respond to Jesus' lines of questioning by rightly defining what the law is, summing up what we heard from Leviticus 19 this morning. You shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your strength, with all of your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. The problem comes, though, with the lawyer questioning and wanting to split hairs in trying to interpret the words of the law when it comes to concerning who is my neighbor. Because the lawyer could do, at least he thought, all that the law commanded concerning his relationship with God. So he thought. But Jesus taught the lawyer and asked him, could you do everything that is prescribed in the law in concern to your neighbor? Thus, if the lawyer could not keep the second tablet of the law, he failed to keep the first tablet, and the whole law was broken. For we know that if we break one iota, one little law, we break the law in its entirety. And that's the crux of the conversation. The lawyer was having with Jesus 
of his efforts to try to justify himself in order to achieve fulfillment of God's law. But what we see playing out in the Gospel reading, it is an Article 4 issue of the Augsburg Confession, not an article of the Creed in Luther's small catechism, not one of those petitions of the Lord's Prayer or of the what does this mean and the commandments. No, I'm talking about knowing your Article 4 of the Augsburg Confession. I know you all know it. You know your Article 4 of the Luther Confessions. You got it memorized. You're ready to go and you say, absolutely, this is all about Article 4 in the Lutheran Augsburg Confessions. Absolutely, Pastor, you're right. I see the heads not nodding. <laughs> see, this is not an Article 1 issue of the Augsburg Confession that deals about who God is. It's not an Article 2 issue about original sin because the lawyer identifies it. It's not even an Article 3 issue about the Son of God, but technically it could be, because he messes up Article 4. So what is happening is the lawyer misunderstands Article 4 of what the Augsburg Confession teaches us as Christians. And now I can see that you're really wanting to know what is Article 4? Justification. The lawyer sought to justify himself and he could not. Justification in Article 4 of the Augsburg Confession is as this. Our churches teach that people cannot be justified before God by their own strength, merit, or works. People are freely justified for Christ's sake through faith when they believe that they are received into favor and their sins are forgiven for Christ's sake. By his death, Christ made justification for our sins. God counts this faith for righteousness in his sight. This is what justification is. It's not about how we try to justify our actions or our going with the law. This is about justifying what God has given to us. In other words, Ephesians 2, 8 through 9 sums it up. It is by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not your own doing. This is a gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. The law may always seem like we want to split hairs of it because we lose our focus on how the law has been fulfilled in Christ Jesus our God. Think about it, though. We really don't argue about the law and what it says. We don't argue about doing the right thing in life, like honoring our father and mother, as it is expounded upon in Exodus 20, verse 12. Honor your father and mother. Do this so that your days may be long in the land of the Lord that he is giving to you. We don't mind doing that. We agree that that is good. The law of God is good. And we don't even really tend to argue about what the law as Christians comes to as is further explained in Leviticus 19, even though it has those negatives. You shall not steal. You shall not deal falsely. You shall not lie to one another. You shall not swear by the name of the Lord your God. You shall not do any injustice. You shall not hate your neighbor. All those do nots we agree to be true. We know that that law of God is right and just. But the problem comes to when we try to justify our motives, and our actions in comparison to what that law declares. That's where it becomes a problem in our life. Our self-righteousness leads Jesus to tell the story about the Good Samaritan to the lawyer and to us this morning. And at the end, Jesus tells the lawyer as he goes about and says, who showed mercy? Was it the priest who passed by on the other side of the road? Was it the Levite who passed by on the other side of the road? No, it was the Good Samaritan. Who then showed mercy? When questioned to the lawyer, the lawyer knows the answer. As a lump forms in his mouth, he knows it was the Good Samaritan. And that lump is in the lawyer's throat because he knows 
he can never be the good Samaritan. You and I can fully never be what the good Samaritan has done. For sadly, we know that, like that lawyer knew, we fail. We fail miserably. All have fallen short of the glory of God. All break the law of God, and we cannot be justified by our own merits. We can only be justified through Christ. For a few words of wisdom that are spoken by a fictional character kind of bring it all back to light. Words from Yoda. Do or do not. There is no try. We can try all we want. We can think we can do all we want. We do not do all we want, but in the end, we can't satisfy the law. We can't be that good Samaritan because that good Samaritan is Jesus Christ. What we do not keep perfectly, what we fail time and time again in doing and do not doing, our Lord has already fulfilled. Those times when we're the priests and the Levite, and especially when we are that man left in a ditch, stripped, beaten, and left for dead, our Lord and Savior, the Good Samaritan, has come to save us. Thanks be to God. Jesus Christ has accomplished salvation for us. Jesus Christ has given us justification. He has justified us in the eyes of God. It is not by our actions we are saved. It is only through Christ and Him alone. He tends to our mortal wounds. He carries us to the place where healing is given. And He has paid the price that no other person could pay. For the lesson that we glean as the lawyer also knew is that interacting with Jesus, we see that he alone justifies. He alone fulfills all that law, all that doing, all of that taking care of focusing in on the Lord God with heart, mind, body, soul, and loving neighbor. Jesus has done that all. For we, like the lawyer, look to Jesus as he says, go and do and know that we'll never be able to fulfill, but we go and live. We live knowing that Jesus has already justified. Jesus has saved us through his suffering, through his death, his glorious resurrection. Jesus fulfilled the law. Jesus has saved us. This is the good news that Jesus wanted the lawyer to know that even though he said go and do likewise and knowing full well that he wasn't going to be able to do likewise, he had one right in front of him who would do it, who has done it for you. And not only has Jesus taken you and bounded your wounds of sin and your mortality he has also paid the price for your sin and the sin of the entire world. All those who have lived and who will ever live. Jesus paid the price. This is the good news that we have. Knowing that justification has been accomplished. Knowing Jesus has saved. Paul writes about this in Romans chapter 5. For while we are still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Christ died for you. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would even dare die. But God shows his love for us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Christ has saved us. Christ has justified us. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now the peace that passes our human understanding, keep our hearts and minds 
in that truth of the justification that Christ has accomplished for us through his suffering, death, and resurrection, now and forever. Amen. Having heard the word proclaimed, and as our offerings are brought forward at this time, we continue with our offertory hymn on the bottom of page 7. We stand for prayer. Let us now pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Father in heaven, we confess that apart from Christ we have no righteousness. Yet we rejoice that because your Son has died and risen for us, you promise that our righteousness exceeds even that of the scribes and Pharisees. Because we know the hope that you have laid upon us and up for us in heaven, Bless those who share the faith, especially be with Pastor Michelle Liu in the Chinese mission, Pastor Paul and family as they, as they serve in Asia, and Brian and Barb Sorge as they serve in Asia. Keep them confident in the faith and a caring love for all those in need. Lord, in your mercy, Father in heaven, by your grace we have died to sin, yet sin continues to overpower us. Bless all of our members, especially be with Ling Long Fang, Roger, Daniel, Micah Liu, and Yang Rong Yan, Doug and Carol Lewick, Ed and Dixie Lunkenheimer, and those not in attendance with us this day. Fill us all with a repentant faith that knows that we have been buried with Christ through baptism into his death. Fill us with the Samaritan's joy in helping those in need, no matter what the cost to ourselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, as you grant the length of days to many in our families and in our communities, you bless us with wisdom, you grant us the opportunity to live out your love for them. We also thank you for husbands and wives, especially those who celebrate wedding anniversaries this week, with Ron and Debbie Baker, Daryl Katina Chapman, Eric and Jillian Carnes, Bert and Jennifer Fioka, Wesley and Natalie Cardin, Bill and Debbie Cronin, Sean and Delia Carey, Pastor and Irene Paul, Byron and Lori St. Jr. Help us to rightly treasure what you have given to us, and as we grow in our weakness and need, deepen our trust in your strength to bear and your power to save. Lord, in your mercy. Father in heaven, as you have granted us to live in a nation where your people may still gather without fear, 
Bless all of our youth and those leaders attending the National Youth Gathering in Houston this week. Guard and protect them as they hear and proclaim your gospel message. May they return to us re reinvigorated to boldly declare your glory and to continue to bear fruit and grow in the faith. Lord, in your mercy, Father in heaven, you have commanded that special attention and care be paid to the fatherless and widows. Abide with all who are lonely. Use us to visit the homebound and those in care facilities, those who require ongoing care, the hospitalized, the recovering, and those with special needs. Remember especially those we lift up to you, Bob Grant, Frank Reichowicz, John Woodson, Carol Stevens, Bob Hartman, Louis Benton, Joel Sutton, Byron Sint Sr., Ethan Fenwick, Raymond Kenzel, Don Diekman, Phyllis Diekman, Becca Anderson, Kayla Spicer, Doretta Fairchild, Bob Hoffman, Mark Kell, Ruth Bashir, Cindy Westfall, Jennifer Feigl, Terry Shirley, and all others who need your mercy. Lord, in your mercy. Father in heaven, you have been faithful unto us who deserve none of your mercy. Lead us to receive this with grateful hearts and to be faithful even unto death that we may receive that crown of everlasting life that you have won for us. Hear us in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, through whom, with whom, and in whom be all glory and honor, who lives and reigns with you, the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created, and you sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our Savior and bear our sin and to be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and in the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us to do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he is betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
bless you, keeping your baptismal grace now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you, keeping your baptismal grace now and forever. Amen. bless you keeping your baptismal grace now and forever amen take and eat this is the true body of our lord and savior jesus christ which is given unto you
take and drink the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of your sin. Take and drink the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of your sin. Take and drink the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of your sin. Oh, this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you and keep you steadfast the one true faith until life everlasting depart in his peace. Amen.
We stand for our post-communion canticle, Thank the Lord. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. We implore you that of your mercy would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen.